You know, it's nuts. Um, last week, I was at an anime convention, and I bought all these new wall scrolls for the show, and it just... It just escaped my mind. I didn't even consider it to buy a Hunter Hunter one. I, I don't know, because I like Hunter Hunter, and I know I'm doing, like, a semi-occasionally Hunter Hunter content on the channel, but it just escaped my mind. I don't know. Maybe cause, maybe I was still pissed about the whole Hunter Hunter going back on hiatus thing. It's like, well, why should I bother buying a wall scroll? It's back on hiatus again. But, um, whatever. Hey, let me tell you something, okay? Despite all the different hiatus, hiatuses, still don't know the plural of that, that Hunter Hunter goes on, there is a reason why Togashi still has a place at Shonen Jump. There's a reason why he could go away for over a year and then just come back and start right where he left off. Probably like contracts and legal issues, but the reason is, the main reason I like to think is the guy is a good writer. He's a good mangaka, and you know, like Yu Yu Hakusho is one of my favorite anime of all time, and Hunter x Hunter, now that I'm caught up with it, is also one of my favorites as well. It's just a great story. The guy knows how to write good manga, right? So they could still make Shonen Jump money even though he, you know, goes away for every now and then. Um, um, but, uh, yeah, today, though, we're gonna be talking about a Nen ability from Hunter x Hunter. One of my favorite Nen abilities, actually. This might start a new series where I go into detail and discuss, uh, multiple Nen abilities in the series by different characters, but, um, you know, discussing Nen abilities is a little different than discussing, like, One Piece Devil Fruit abilities. There's, there's a lot more to unpack here. Because Tagashi, it's, it's kind of funny. If you go back to, like, Yu Yu Hakusho, the abilities that he wrote for his characters were pretty simple. Like, the main character, Yusuke, his ability, his main ability was just, I fire a big fuck-off energy beam from my fingertips. How much more basic could you get? You know, Kurama had his, his plants. Hiei was just, well, Hiei was just badass in general, but he had, like, fire and, like, black flame dragon from hell. Kuwabara had a laser sword. And you had other demons throughout Yu Hakusho, like, I use fire, I use wind, you know, basic shit. He gets to Hunter Hunter, and a lot of those net abilities are based off things that even if they seem simple at first, Tagashi will give you like a mountain of text to really break down like every single aspect of this net ability. Like, let me give you an example. Um, let's say, um, teleportation. That's a pretty basic anime type, you know, move to the ability to teleport various places. And there's characters in Hunter x Hunter that can teleport. But I feel like in most series, whenever you're going to write in a character to teleport, you're probably going to give them like a few limitations. Like they can't teleport around the world or something like that. Or they can only go to pre-visited destinations, that kind of stuff. But they're not going to go into great detail beyond that. You'd be like, oh, I can only teleport a certain distance and it, or it has to be a place I've already been before. And that's how my ability works. There you go. Not Tagashi. Tagashi will go into great detail. He'll discuss, like, every little tiny detail about that ability and, and the things you can do and can't do. Like, one problem I always felt with a teleportation ability is um, I would be afraid of teleporting somewhere and getting stuck in a wall. Like, imagine if I wanted to teleport into a forest and I get, like, jam like I, I teleport into the forest and I get stuck into a tree. Like, oh my god! You know, my, mo my molecules just materialized, you know, right in the middle of a tree trunk and I'm dead. You know, Tagashi would be the kind of guy to go into detail. I was like, oh, okay, well, that's how this works, and there's a fail-safe to prevent that, or you have to be careful about doing that. That's why I just love him as a writer. But anyway, today is an interesting ability, because we're going to be talking about Knuckles' net ability from Hunter x Hunter, Chapter 7 Bankruptcy, also known as The Heavens Don't Know My Suffering. <coughs> Um, it's April 17th here in the States, and that's tax day, um, so you have to bust out all your official tax forms and your calculators and all your receipts out. Yeah, yeah, you know where it goes, right? This is the kind of stuff people watch anime to escape from. That's where the term escapism exists. Some guy sitting around crunching the numbers like, oh my damn freaking taxes, bullshit, or maybe you took out a loan for college or something, and you're just like, oh man, how am I gonna freaking pay back all this interest? Screw this, I'm watching anime. You know, and then Tagashi takes that concept, something that, hey, it, it's original. I mean, how, how many other anime out there are taking the concept of, you know, like taxes, and loans and making that into a, an ability for their character. There might be a few others because there's been a lot of anime, but um, I think it's a, definitely a small pool there. Uh, Knuckle already is a badass character, kind of like a combination between Kuwabara and Josuke Higashikata. You know, he's got the uh, the pompadour going on, buff physique, very straightforward personality, but he's a cool enough dude if you get to know him. Um, and his ability, Chapter 7, is one of my favorite in the entire story. So how you start it off is quite simple. 
Knuckle has to hit his opponent. Doesn't have to be anything flashy. It could just be a simple punch or a kick that's charged up with his aura. Now, the whole concept of Chapter 7 is that uh, he lets his opponent actually borrow some of his aura, or his opponent has to return the borrowed aura to him. So, while the ability is activated, there's not actually a lot of direct fighting between Knuckle and an opponent. In fact, there can't be. Until the ability is nullified in some way, or, or Knuckle is knocked unconscious by an Ant King, but what are the odds of that happening? Um, the ability really revolves more around, like, less about doing damage and more about just aura exchange, alright? So I'm gonna have to use a lot of abbreviations that Tagashi invented for this, as well as a lot of ones that he repurposed, and there's a lot of numbers involved here, so if you have the mentality of Gone, uh, you should probably turn off the video, because I don't want your brains to overheat, guys. I, I understand it's, it's it's a little bit too much. That That's the funniest thing ever. Like, Knuckle didn't even really have to use his ability on Go, and all he had to do was explain it to him, and that would have been enough to take him out. So, anyway, after hitting his opponent, uh, he can give any amount of aura, I guess, over to his opponent, all right? And this amount of aura is represented by a, a number, just a numerical value of aura that you're lending your opponent. And um, how is this uh, aura number represented? Well, that's through the first little mascot you have for this ability. There's there's two of them. The first at mascot is named APR. Now, in our world, APR stands for Annual Percentage Rate. It has to deal with your credit and, like, how much you borrowed from each year, your annual percentage rate. In uh, Hunter Hunter, Tagashi repur uh, repurposed APR to mean a Amortizing Power Redirector. All right, and it's just this cute, adorable little chibi angel thing that just appears attached to the opponent and it has the little number on his head, and the higher the number gets, uh, he'll get bigger. And every 10 seconds, it increases by 10%. There's a 10% interest rate. So let's say that Knuckle, just let's just keep it basic. He gives his opponent 100 aura. So you got 100, and then 10 seconds go by, and then 10 additional aura go on, 10%, so it's up to 110. And then... 10 seconds later, 10% of 110, which will be 11, gets added, so it's 121. And then after that, another 10 seconds pass, 121's 10%, which is like 12 point whatever, gets added, and it keeps adding up. Now, at first, you know, the first minute or so, it's not that big of a deal. You know, you go from like 100, maybe after a minute or so, it'll be around 200 something, but as the fight goes on and the minutes add up and the interest keeps building and building and building, it's going to snowball out of control, and before you know it, this, uh, this little chibi angel thing is no longer a chibi. It's a huge thing with a giant number on it. Now, the actual meaning of the number on APR and how big it has to get and what happens afterwards is quite simple. Once the number on APR exceeds the total aura that the enemy has, uh, he can no longer pay it back. So let's say uh, the maximum aura that one character has, their MOP, the maximum aura they have in their body is 2,000. Once APR goes over 2,000, even if you expend all the aura in your body, you can't pay back that 2,000. Let's say it's at 2,300. You only have 2,000. So that means that APR's effect is, act is, is realized, and uh, the next mascot appears, who is IRS, Internal Ren Suppressor, which is like this little demon cat thing. And uh, the true terror of uh, Chapter 7 bankruptcy, after the, after the enemy goes bankrupt, is that when IRS attaches to you, you you are unable to use your Nen for 30 days. You're in a 30-day forced state of Zetsu. So you can't use any of your Nen abilities. You can't even really sense Nen around you. Now, if you know about Hunter Hunter and you know about how fights are used, and if you, you know what happens when a Nen user uses a Nen attack against somebody that doesn't, you know, doesn't have the capabilities of using Nen, that is devastating. Alright, it doesn't matter how physically strong you are. You could be like the biggest buff dude in the world. If you don't have uh, Nen, if your if your aura nodes aren't open or if you don't access to your Nen and you get hit with a Nen attack, you're you're going down, all right? That's going to fuck you up pretty hard. So, and, and just the fact you can't use any of your abilities. Very dangerous power here. So, um, really all it comes down to is a game of numbers. How much aura your opponent has at their potential. Um, in Gon's case, I think it was around 2,000 when Knuckle fought him. And when the number on APR got higher than 2,000, Gon could not pay it off. There's some other little abbreviations here to go into, such as POP and AOP. So, potential aura output is how much you could potentially put out at any given time, but your actual amount as well, what you can actually do. And you can increase your POP 
when it comes to training. You know, like let's say you can only output 500 aura at a time, and then you train really hard in like certain regiments, and you can get that up to a thousand. Or really, all you have to keep in mind is the maximum aura your opponent has. And when Knuckle fought against Yuppie, who was one of the Royal Guard and had just like a tremendous, like a gargantuan amount of aura on them, like a, like an insane amount. I think it was something over like 200,000 or something like that. Might have been much more than that. Um, it really doesn't become uh, an easy fight at that point because you have to figure out some way to avoid your opponent for several minutes, maybe even, you know, something like 30 or 40 minutes. In a major fight like that with such a strong opponent, APR is really not that practical unless you have some other way to uh, to, to avoid your opponent. Like, for instance, in, in the aforementioned fight with UP, Knuckle also had Meliorin helping him out, and he could turn invisible using his power, the, the god's uh, accomplice. So that way that they could, uh, you know, stick APR to UP without UP even being aware, and they could hopefully escape the area uh knuckles ability only works i think it was in originally it was stated to be 100 meters he had to stay within his opponent for the apr to take effect and uh, i think that was a uh, retcon later to like 50 meters or something so anyway it's a decent distance that you can get between your opponent and you but you can't just like hit you with hit the opponent with apr and then like you know get in a car and drive away several miles and then hope it would still you know accrue interest apr will still stay attached to the opponent um but it won't uh, the counter won't get any higher and knuckle is aware of their location location since he has his Nen attached to them. I love APR. I just think that little guy is so adorable, you know, because it's, uh, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't actually hurt the opponent. He's harmless, uh, but he's also indestructible. I love the concept that with, through Nen, you can create a straight up indestructible construct and it's legitly indestructible. Like even, uh, M Meruim, the Ant King tried to kill this thing and it wouldn't, it wouldn't work. It's like just launching like an energy death beam attack and the thing is just like, hi, Adding interest. Imagine though, imagine how annoying that would be and how just depressing that would be if you take out like a college loan, especially if you live in America. You know all about college loans in this country. Um, you take out a college loan of like, I don't know, $10,000, which is, you know, sometimes on the lower end. I, I, I knew people that are several tens of thousands of dollars in, in debt when it comes to that. But, um, you get a little, you get a little buddy though. You get a little cute little mascot that, that, that sticks to you and just announces how much you're screwed financially. Like you're sleeping at night and you just wake up and it's just like, hi, adding interest. Do -do -do -do. Hi, <laughs> adding interest <laughs> to your college loans. You're just sitting there just crying yourself to sleep at night. Like, shut up. And you just can't get rid of it. It's just stuck to you forever. That's the true terror right there. I think even that's the most devastating ability. You know, APR is harmless. Bullshit. You know, but yeah, that that's a pretty cute ability. But yeah, um, something else, though, that you can fight back against Knuckle is you could tr try to return the aura to him. Because unless you pay back the aura that he originally gave to you, then uh, you can't hurt him, okay? So every time you attack Knuckle, a little bit of that aura is returned, but if it's less than the amount that he returned to you, there's no physical damage. Now, Knuckle can still get, like, knocked back and shit, so there's still, like, inertia to the blow, but he won't be suffering any injury, right? And uh, likewise, the exact opposite. Knuckle can only lend more aura to you. He can't uh, actually cause any damage to you. So his fights, even though he's, he's a, I mean, he's a physically tough dude, Knuckle, and the majority of uh, him and Gon's initial fights, you know, while they were training to go to the NGL, they were all just physical brawls. It wasn't until the last fight that Knuckle revealed his uh, his APR ability to, to, to Gon. Um, so, you know, Knuckle has his options. You know, he could fight in a physical brawl, if he thinks that can do it, but if it's looking like that's not going to be the case, he can attach APR to you after that point, and uh, as long as he can maintain some distance. Uh, another trick that he does is he spends the time to, like, announce and explain his ability to his opponent, like, go, because every second matters. Even if his opponent stands perfectly still, that counter is still going up. Aura is still being expended, and the interest rate is still going up. So, think about how clever that ability is. You know, his opponent asks him, you know, what the hell is this thing? Knuckle could, as long as the opponent is not, like, physically strong to the point where it can, you know, like, just, you know, blow you away and return all that aura and then some to Knuckle, Knuckle could sit there and just be like, oh, okay, well, I'll allow me to explain. That's APR. He's the amortizing power redirector. And what happens, and he just goes on and on about numbers like he did to Gone. By the time Gone turned back around, APR was, like, like up to 1,500, and, and Knuckle's just like, yup, that's what happens when you let your, sh you, you ignore your debt for, like, a few minutes. It snowballs out of control. What do you gonna do um 
So yeah, I've uh, I've always loved this ability and all the different ways it was utilized, especially during the Chimera Ants against Yuppie and everybody. Unfortunately, he never got a he never got the chance to use the IRS ability on any of the Royal Guard because he was you know he was um, basically coerced into removing APR from Yuppie. Later on, he attached it to uh, Shia Poof, but uh, that didn't really go anywhere because they they died of the poisoning really before anything really came of that. Uh, didn't have a chance to attach it to Miruim, although I want. Wonder how long it would have taken for the counter probably like probably like a day or so for the counter to go up on like that's the thing when you're fighting a really strong opponent it really doesn't work because even if let's say knuckle managed to get the jump on miruim it was never going to happen in a million years but let's just say he did he got the jump on miruim and let's say he just like boom and lent miruim like like a thousand aura keep in mind Gon only had like 2,000 something to deal with, and just boom, there's a thousand right there, and you know, the interest keeps going up. Miruim could just turn around, and he could just like, you know, launch an attack that was so great, it returned the thousand aura, and then some, and then just killed Knuckle in the process. So, whenever you're fighting a really strong opponent, you really need to have some other method of uh, sticking APR to your opponent, and then maybe get as far away as possible, up to that, like, 50 meter limit there. Um, oh, and also, whenever the aura is returned to Knuckle, whenever the opponent does get a hit off him, uh, APR shrinks, and the number goes down, and uh, APR is, um, you know, he's like, uh-oh, that hurt, and you know, that, that that's also pretty cute, but most of the time, you, you, throughout the story, I can't remember how many times I've heard that damn, you know, it's time, adding interest, it's time, adding interest, it really does get annoying after a while, which is why I'm making a video about it, I just can't get it out of my damn head, um, but uh, yeah, that, that's Knuckles' ability, I just found it very humorous in the way that Togashi took a spin on this, um, this concept of just something boring and just trivial, like doing your taxes, taking out a loan. He managed to spin that in a way that was really interesting in, in the uh, in Hunter Hunter. So um, let me know about some other Nen abilities that you would like me to discuss. I'm sure I'm probably going to get a like, like talk about Killua's, you know, uh, speed of lightning and all that shit. I'm sure we're going to get a lot of the main character ones, but think of some more obscure ones throughout the series. The ones that don't get to see that much spotlight. Those are the ones that are also really interesting. So let me know on that. And uh, we'll maybe get back to that and see where it goes. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you filed your taxes. This is Teching 101 signing out. I got to fill out some receipts.